It is very common for people with chronic pain to have a fear of exercise. But what I can tell you is that it's the complete opposite. It is very safe for people that have a chronic pain condition to begin exercise. Several things happen to our bodies when we undertake new exercise. Uh, number one, it increases heart rate. And you don't have to exercise hard for there to be a cardiac benefit and have your heart rate increase. When our heart rate increases, our blood vessels expand to allow more blood flow. And that helps bring healing properties as well as oxygen to our muscles, our joints, and our tendons, which helps relieve pain. Good, that's four, that's good posture, last one. Number two is that it helps with our breathing. And when we can breathe well and it expands our lungs, it helps us relax and relieve stress and just kind of feel good about what we're doing. It makes our daily chores that much more enjoyable. When someone's been sedentary for a long period of time, we always encourage them to consult with their physician before beginning a new exercise program. Once they get clearance from their physician that they're safe and appropriate to begin exercise, it's highly recommended that they seek out an exercise professional, whether it's a physical therapist or a personal trainer, to put together an individualized program that is safe and appropriate for them. One, two, get some good extension. Three, good, let me switch you out here, I'll take that. And let's go up top here for your It's very step. important that a person start at a place of exercise that is specifically designed for their level of tolerance to exercise so as not to cause potential harm or pain. One of the biggest challenges with a person that has been dealing with chronic pain for a long time is setting themselves up for failure. They need to understand several things. That number one, they're in control. They don't have to push themselves beyond what is at their comfort level, both emotionally as well as physically. We encourage people to design a program with a friend, go for a walk, join a class with other people that are in similar exercise situations where they are at a similar level of exercise. Combine exercise with something that you enjoy. If they love to garden, go outside and plant flowers, pick vegetables from your garden, that's exercise. Any kind of movement a person can do is beneficial. So make it fun, do it with a family member, and enjoy yourself with a beautiful day of being outside and getting things done. There are tremendous benefits from stretching prior to exercise. We know that stretching before exercise not only can enhance the benefits and performance of exercise, but also plays a big role in helping to prevent injury. There are two main types of stretching. The first kind is what we call static stretching. We put a particular muscle into a static position and we hold that stretch for about 30 seconds and allow that muscle to elongate and stretch. The second type is what we call dynamic stretching. Dynamic stretching is when a person goes through movement to increase blood flow and warm up the muscles. That way they can perform better and help reduce the risk of injury during any type of exercise program. It is a big challenge with a person who has been sedentary for a long period of time when they begin a new exercise program to know the difference between good pain and bad pain. And yes, sometimes when we exercise new muscles, we do have some muscle soreness. That is the way that our muscles are repairing themselves after newly activation. And get a good squeeze of your chest muscles up there. If pain lasts for greater than 72 hours, it may be an indication that the exercise was too aggressive or perhaps a person needs to start with a less intense exercise program. The COVID-19 pandemic has played a big role in not only our physical, but also our mental and emotional well-being. It's depressing to not be able to go out and see our friends and family and be social. 
So exercise can really help not only improve our physical well-being, but really improve our mental state of having to be isolated for so long. It can help reduce our stress, help us maintain a healthy body weight. It can increase metabolism. So we encourage people, whenever they can, to just get outside. Get fresh air, go for a walk, see some people maybe in the street, and just having that social contact, even from a distance, can be extremely beneficial. There are so many wonderful exercises a person can do from home. They don't have to go out and buy expensive weights or expensive cardiovascular machines. They can use jugs of water. They can use cans of soup. Anything to add a little bit of resistance when doing arm exercises, when doing exercises for their legs or for their core can be of extreme benefit. If a person can get up and down their stairs without significant pain, we encourage them at least twice a day to make the trip up the stairs and then using the banister and being safe to come down the stairs. That's a big benefit for leg muscles as well as cardiovascular improvement. Exercise is not always fun, we know that. So making it an enjoyable part of your day is something that can really help you get through the boredom that sometimes exercise brings. Set up a grid where you can check off the days that you complete that exercise. It's fulfilling to see that you've actually accomplished something. Do things throughout the day that are gonna make that exercise fun, something to look forward to, and give yourself a little reward when you're finished exercising. If you know that you've got something to look forward to after completing your exercise, you'll really enjoy that moment of the day. Exercise plays a huge part in restoring function to a person's life. It can be upsetting and depressing if you can't carry your laundry or do the grocery shopping or clean your house or vacuum or do the things that you like to do on just an everyday basis that you used to do all the time without pain. So exercise, whether it's to build strength, to improve flexibility, improve range of motion, can play a major part in getting a person back to doing ADLs, is what we call that, activities of daily living. And when you can start to have better mobility and better strength and less pain, you'll just make every part of your day so much more enjoyable. And what we know is that exercise can happen anywhere. Exercise can happen in their living room. Exercise can happen on their front yard. Exercise can happen on their back deck. Exercise can happen at work. Exercise can happen out in the neighborhood. Exercise can be whatever it is that you want it to be.